Hey everybody, it's Albert, and uh, it appears as though Edward PF123 has been a busy boy, and, and over a period of a few days he turned out about half a dozen videos, either responding directly or tangentially to things involved with something I had done, either blog posts or videos. Um, and, and, it, and it just seemed to get progressively stranger as, as it moved on. Um, now, originally I became aware of all of this by, a, by him posting a response to one of my videos. Um, and then I went and I saw another video that had my username in it, so I, I responded to that one first. Now I'm going back to the original, the, the one that was a response to one of my videos. And I may deal, deal with the other ones since they're, they're just really strange. I may just deal with them in one shot, I'll see, but um, if it's even worth it. But the um, interesting thing here is it, this particular video that he responded to, first of all, um, he s treats it as seemingly as though he thinks it's something recent, even though obviously if you look at the video, it quite obviously says it was posted in August of 2010. And that I haven't even, and the fact is, I haven't even made videos or done anything dealing with King James onlyism in terms of videos or blog posts or that that stuff uh, in well over, you know, just about a year. So it's not like I'm, you know, some current, you know, someone out there making a bunch of videos against King James onlyism. I haven't really talked about it in a long time, but that doesn't seem to matter to Edward. You see, he's he's. he's Somehow I'm still doing it, even though I'm not doing it. And, uh, but this is kind of how King James, what King James Onlyism does to the thought process. Now, the particular video I had made a year and a half ago, uh, and I'll put a link to my to that original video as well as Edward's response um, in down in the description box. The it dealt with Maurice Robinson, and the reason that I felt this was significant is that folks from like Edward, from the um, Gail Ripplinger, Peter Ruckman conspiracy theory end of King James Onlyism, like to paint anyone opposed to King James Onlyism as part of some Alexandrian cult. Well, here we have Maurice Robinson, who quite obviously is not in part of some Alexandrian cult. In fact, he's one of the few and certainly the most notable scholar who takes a Byzantine priority position. Uh, but he quite obviously sees King James only as for what it is, a, an intellectual backwater that is, is based upon circular reasoning and has no validity whatsoever and, you know, and, and we'll get more into this as we move along. But I, one thing I want you to, if you look at my original video and you look at Edward's video, you'll notice one thing right away. He responds to almost nothing in the video, nothing that Robinson said. He just really, it doesn't matter. Um, it's he just sort of wow no it's almost as though he's kind of I don't know if he's trying to convince himself or convince his fanboys, uh, but it's kind of like put the see here move along move along you know and and that's pretty much it. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's get into Edward's video and we'll just sort of see what happens as we move along. Good afternoon. I just saw a video. Put up by Lady 312, this one's entitled Moise Robinson on King James Onlyism. And uh, what this, of course, is, is a typical scholarship only uh, viewpoint. For those unaware, within that conspiracy theory end of King James Onlyism, the Ripplinger Ruckman end, um, there's a tendency to uh, basically try to, to deflect criticism of King James Onlyism by referring to all those opposed to it as being scholarship onlyism, as though scholarship were a bad thing, is because they don't really want you to base it on something, let's say, like evidence, because they don't really care about evidence. Um, now, what, what they see, and, and here's the important part, see, what they do is they try to pretend they care about evidence. They won't actually be honest and just admit they think the King James Bible's right because, well, they think the King James Bible's right. Uh, because that would be completely idiotic and circular and quite obviously so. So they try to pretend they have evidence. So what they'll do is they'll try to find wherever the King James Bible got their particular reading of something and then latch onto it and defend it. Now, even if it 
that methodology, let's say in this verse, completely contradicts the methodology they use in another verse. You know, for example, in the many places where the King James Bible matches the majority text, they, they, they'll make a majority, well, well there's thousands and thousands of manuscripts, and, and, but when it doesn't match the majority text, suddenly there's thousands and thousands of manuscripts that really don't matter anymore. And they, they go to some other argument. There's no consistency other than the obvious ploy that the King James Bible is right because the King James Bible is right. And that's it. And if they had said that, of course, people would know that it's, well, moronic. Um, but, you know, the, the important thing here is that as strange as King James onlyism is, when you look at it just intuitively, like, Excuse me, you're just telling me the final word on textual issues, textual variants is a 17th century translation by the Church of England? No, see, it gets worse because once you look at the scholarship, that intuitive oddity becomes even more ridiculous, but that's just what King James Onlyism is about. That, uh, uh, trying to attack the uh, people who believe in the King James Bible as a perfect word of God as a, as a movement. And uh, taking all the blogs and and just intimidating people and uh, you know just just uh, pu you know crushing dissent and uh, that's what uh, Layman three twelve constantly is putting up that nonsense. Sorry, Edward, we're all onto the little game and we all know what's going on. Um, the fact is, King James only is an, is has a an entirely cultic mentality that simply is things like evidence and, and reasonable conclusions and, and examining things fairly is simply impenetrable to these people. Um, that you're basically just making circular arguments and that's all you can do. And we're on to it. And the fact is that if you go around and you look at, let's say, videos dealing with the Bible on YouTube, invariably these people will show up and they'll try to intimidate other people, particularly Christians who may not be that well versed in the issue and 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 just flood the things and and I, and, and vote down comments of people that disagree with them or flag them as spam, which I've seen on comments my own video, uh, which is why on things a video dealing with King James onlyism I've just started to say in voting on comments because that's they basically do that and and I'm not saying all of you guys do that I, mean, I don't even think you do it but there are those who do because they can't stand things discussions that actually are based upon factual evidence because once you look at the factual evidence your position is demonstrably ridiculous um, it just is uh, and that's that's simply a fact and you can't really deal with it and uh, show you here that this is the work that uh, uh, Maurice A. Robinson, this is the work he put out came out in 2005 <coughs> it's another Greek text Another useless piece of work. It means nothing. Not going to edify anybody. Doesn't help one person uh, learn about God. Doesn't get, it's uh, irrelevant to anything. But uh, these guys put this junk out in order to uh, uh, make themselves feel important. Uh, here's uh, another majority text. Zane Hodge. There you go. We got another one there. So, I mean. What's really amusing here is like, yeah, yeah, and I got those two books too. But the difference is that, of course, Edward says they're worthless, which makes you wonder why he has them. Um, they are Greek texts, and there was a reason for them to be produced, um, and that a number of these these scholars who were working on these believed in the Byzantine priority position. Well, of course, if you're going to believe in that, you kind of at least have to tell people what that position is, um, and what the evidence is. And one of the things, and one of the reasons why King James only is get upset by things like the majority texts when after it was produced is because for a long time King James only is assumed. The King James Bible represented the majority text. You'll still see that in a lot of King James only literature, is that they claim this is the, what they have is the majority text, but it isn't. Uh, it differs from it in you know, 1,800 places or at least 1,500. Um, so no, they're, they're, it doesn't represent it. What it represents is an is an historical process that led to the King James translation, which took which ended up with the. The um, King James with the majority text is the basis, but then later it was edited by various um, Catholic monks, and then it went through this long process that ended up with King James Bible at the end of it. But they won't acknowledge this historical process that led the King James Bible. They want to make it seem as though the King James Bible 
you know, came out of the sky or something, that there was not part of an historical process and development, that it really doesn't necessarily represent a pure text from, you know, the first century, because it doesn't. It's obviously the end, end of a long process that introduced novelties into the text, not anything that negates anything in the text, but novelties nonetheless, but they just don't want to admit the obvious facts. And uh, they talk about uh, King James only is putting out literature for money. What do you think this is for? What do you think this is for? It's only purpose for this. <clears throat> money. Not helping anybody. Nobody's going from this. <clears throat> so you put this stuff out in order to you know, alternative text and text types. But uh, King James people uh, believe it's never, never stated at all that uh, the uh, uh, King James Bible is from solely from the Benzatine text type. That's the basis of it, but we know we have minority readings in there, and uh, the right readings can be defended uh, from various sources, uh, from uh, church fathers, from uh, Old Latin, from uh, uh, other translations. And there's nothing that says that uh, it has to be solely from the Greek or the Hebrew. Yes, Edward, you can defend those readings, and the way you do it is called circular reasoning. Um, you just assume the King James Bible is right, and whatever source, no matter how late, no matter how obscure, no matter where it came from, no matter how inconsistent your methodology, apart from the single method of assuming the King James Bible is right, there is no consistent methodology anywhere else. All they do is assume, they, they, they can't say, this is the way we, we analyze the text, and this is the, the, the principles we operate upon, and we, we, can apl and we apply these everywhere. Um, and this is our methodology. No, their methodology simply consists of the King James Bible's right, and if we can find it anywhere, we're going to defend that reading in that particular manuscript or, or what, wherever it came from, no matter how obviously late or even if it's a gloss to the text, even if it doesn't show up until the 16th century. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter as long as they can find some reading. And even if they, it doesn't show up in any manuscript, but someone used it as as a theory, as, as a conjecture, they'll latch on to the conjecture. It just doesn't matter. Evidence is not important. The only evidence that matters to them is that it appears in the King James Bible. See, and this is the problem I have with it, is if you just said that, like, well, it's right because the King James Bible is right, at least that would be honest. But what you're doing is pretending you, you're concerned about the evidence, but you're really not. You're only concerned about defending the King James Bible at all costs. And, you know, if you just said, well, well it, it's the King James Bible, of course it's right, because everyone, if you say that to people, everyone knows it's, you know, 17th century translation by the Church of England, yeah, that's going to be the final authority on, 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 on textual issues. Everyone knows that's absurd. So you have to come up with an excuse and, and pretend that you care about the evidence, but you really don't. Uh, as long as the reading lines up and is correct, uh, that's what counts. The source is irrelevant. Now, there's two parts of that. One, he says, as long as the reading lines up, and then he says, and is correct. Well, in the first case, it, it's true. As long as the reading lines up, um, as long as you can find a kid reading somewhere, but a lot of these readings are quite obviously not correct. Um, th there is no evidence of these readings, or the, the, they, they're obviously introduced into the textual tradition sometime after the 10th century. This is obviously not original readings. Now, you know, the fact is, if you can find, for example, I would be, if, if you can find, let's say, something that's in the early Byzantine readings, or it's somewhere, and it appears, let's say, pr prior to the 4th, 5th century, you know, it, it appears somewhere in the 4th or 5th century, you know, something like that, and you say, well, the reason this reading doesn't appear earlier is because of the region it was in, the climate, you know, obviously Egypt going to climactically is going to preserve text better because it's an arid climate as opposed to somewhere where it's mixed and, 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 and text would deteriorate more readily. And you say, well, I, this reading came earlier, and you can point to some early manuscripts. You know, when you see Byzantine texts appearing, these readings appear with them. I could, that to me, that would, and that's one of the things Robinson, the case Robinson makes for certain things. I can look at that and say, yeah, okay. Okay, you, 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 got, you got a point there, and we could argue about that. But when you look at things that were obviously introduced in, in very, very late centuries, and we have a paper trail of them, 
and where they came from, then you're really grasping at straws. Um, it just it just doesn't it doesn't wash at all. Sorry, Edward, it just doesn't. But uh, this is another thing about leaving three twelve. We constantly puts out. Constantly puts out. I'm constantly putting out things about this, huh? As in the prior to this recent batch of videos, which I had not talked about King James onlyism in a year. And in fact, if he hadn't made these videos, I wouldn't be talking about it now. Um, and in fact, the the video th that he's responding to here is a year and a half old. And the blog post that he was so bent out of shape about doesn't mention the King James Bible anywhere. It doesn't mention it at all. Um, but you see, Edward, in, in this sort of conspiracy theory mentality, reads the King James Version into everything that anybody does. It doesn't matter. You could, you could be talking about the weather, he told, and somehow make it sound as though you're attacking the King James Bible if he thinks you're, quote, an enemy of the King James Version or something. It's, it's very strange, but the, I challenge anyone to go look at my videos. As I mentioned, there are, in the last year, there were only two videos that even tangentially are connected. One had to do with a particular verse, and in fact, in there, I defended the King James Version against people who say it's incorrect. I defended it as correct for 1611. It's just the, the, the meaning of the word has changed since then. Um, so you could hardly call me as attacking the King James Bible there. And the other one had to do with a particular King James only, as, but it was not anything dealing with the King James Bible at all. Uh, apart from that, in terms of like a real um, video directed at King James onlyism, you'd have to go back to February of 2011. Uh, a year ago, and I haven't dealt with it, but somehow in Edward's mind, I'm constantly attacking the King James Bible or something, which, and I've never attacked the King James Bible at all. I've, I've attacked King James onlyism, which is a very, very different thing. Uh, who's a high churchman? Who's a guy who, uh, who thinks that the, uh, uh, we're supposed to give up our Bibles, King James Bibles, and return to historic Christianity, where you sit around with literatures and, uh, you know, uh, sacraments. As is usual with the Ruckman Ripplinger end of King James Onlyism, when the um, factual data is clearly not on your side, you make stuff up. And and here's here here I'm going to challenge you, Edward. Here's a chance to to prove yourself or expose yourself as a liar. Look at all the videos I've ever made, all the blog posts, whatever you want to look at, and show me where I've ever said anyone has to give up their King James Bible, which is what you just accused me of, of being in favor of. What is the evidence for this, Edward? There isn't any, because I've never said it. And you're a liar. You're a liar. That's, that's all there is to it. Similarly to me constantly attacking the King James Bible, first of all, I don't attack the King James Bible, I attack King James onlyism. And the fact is, I haven't even done that in a year. So you're obviously a liar there, too. So you're, you know, basically you're, you're a liar. That's, that's all the, I'm sorry, but that's just, the evidence is clearly on the side of that conclusion. Unless you can come up with something, which you can't, because it doesn't exist. Um, as for me believing in sacraments, yeah, I believe in sacraments. And you know what? So did the people who translated the King James Bible. Yes, they did, Edward. Including everyone in charge of it, all the, the leaders of the various, various groups. They believed in sacraments, too, because the vast majority of them were Anglicans. Um, the ones who weren't were uh, Calvinists, um, which I'm mean, no thrills. You know, I know that's got to thrill you to no end. Uh, so basically, they, they were high churchmen, Edward. Just you know, I'm a high churchman. They were high churchmen. I'm an Anglican. They're Anglicans. Yes, Edward. There you have it. The King James Bible was a Bible produced by people who were primarily high churchmen who believed in sacraments. Chew on that for a while. And um, you know, listen, looking those dead buildings. Um, but uh, this is. Uh, uh, the alternative you have, you have a King James Bible in a local church, or you're going back into that, uh, the darkness of, uh, medieval Christianity, uh, Reformation Christianity, uh, where, uh, a, a state church was set up, and, uh, you have a, uh, system, uh, of dead Christianity of just built around traditions. Okay, let's think about what Edward said here. 
the two forces opposing each other, the two sides you have to choose from. On the one side is the King James Bible. On the other side is things like medieval Christianity, the Reformation, the, all those state churches and their traditions. Um, in fact, one of those reform products of the Reformation was the uh, Church of England. Um, that was one of the state churches that he's referring to from the Reformation. And the Church of England gave us a number of things, like the Book of Common Prayer, 39 Articles, and the King James Bible. Edward, the King James Bible is a product of the Reformation in a state church. No. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to subject you to any more of Edward's video after that last bit. Um, but if you want to see it in full, both my original video on Maurice Robinson from a year and a half ago, and Edward's response to that video from a few days ago, links to both of those will be in the description box, and you can go take a look at them, and then you'll see that's what I it's, you'll, you'll see the whole thing. Um, and these other videos I may or may not respond to, but. You know, it, it, and you, I think it's pretty obvious why I'm not dealing with King James-onlyism anymore as in general. And there you have it. Thank you very much for your time.